We have previously discussed how to use tick bars, dollar bars, and volume bars to get better statistical properties for our compressed bars comparing to time bars. But now let's take a look at ML FinLab functions, which are used to create these type of data structures. So here we can see four functions, which corresponds to each of the to each type of bars we have previously discussed. And the first one is get time bars. As you can see here, we can either specify a path to, C, to a CSV file, which contains our traits, which we'd like to compress, or pandas data frame. We can also see the resolution string, which can be either D for daily, H for hours, M for minutes, and S for seconds, number of units, which corresponds to number of resolution units. So for example, if you'd like to compress your bars into five hour bars, your resolution string will be H and number of units is one. We can also specify whether we would like, we would like to output uh, our results to a CSV file or to a pandas data frame. So if you would like to output your uh, result into a CSV file, your CSV to, to your two CSV parameter uh, will be equal to true and you should specify the output path for that. The next three functions correspond to standard bars and have the same API for each of them. So here, let's take a look at very important parameter, which is called threshold. And it corresponds to number of units uh, after which we uh, sample and generate our bar our out of ticks. So um, here in tick bars, threshold uh, means number of trades after which we compress our bar, get volume bars, threshold equals to volume, and for get dollar bar threshold equals to dollar volume. So we can also see that threshold can be either a fixed float value or panda series. It is done, uh, for example, for researchers who would like to use a dynamic threshold, and instead of using a fixed value, they would like to use a panda series with um, threshold uh, Indicating, indicated for each day. There are common guidelines from the original paper which show how to choose the uh, threshold for, uh, for example, volume bars. So originally, Marcos Lopez de Prado suggests to, to use uh, volume bars threshold such that the number of bars per day equals to 50. So a good starting point for that is to take a dollar volume or like volume if you create volume bars and to divide it by 50 and try to, try to generate these type of bars and uh, play around with them. So we have discussed standard bars, but what, what can be the next step in our advanced uh, bar compression? And it is called information driven bars. So the purpose of information driven bars is to sample more frequently with new inform when new information arrives to the market. In the context of the word information is used in the market microstructural sense. In this case, this information is volume or tick imbalance, which is associated with presence of informed traders. So as a result, we can compress our bars into either tick imbalance, volume imbalance, or dollar imbalance. And we sample, for example, tick bars whenever tick imbalances exceed our expectations. And we would like to determine such tick index, so time, when the accumulation of sign ticks, according to tick rule, exceeds a given threshold. So on the right-hand side, you can see uh, the value of threshold and the cumulative uh, volume imbalance. And if this volume imbalance exceeds the threshold, we sample the bar. Bar sampling, especially uh, in imbalance and uh, information within bars, is rather a complex uh, algorithm. And what I would like to suggest to you is to go through the uh, book description of bars generation at ML FinLab code to get a better understanding of how these bars are formed and um, what is the intuition behind bar generation. So if we take a look at uh, tick volume and dollar of uh, imbalance, the monitor order flow imbalance as measured in terms of ticks, volumes, and dollar values exchanged. So now let's take a look at the original code and original description of um, uh, and the original description uh, of the algorithm. 
Okay, so as we can see, we start from a so-called tick rule. So consider a sequence of ticks where PT is a price which is associated with a tick T and the volume which is associated with, uh, and the VT is the volume which is associated with tick T. This is so-called tick rules and it defines a sequence where BT equals to either the previous value of BT if the price changed equals to zero or um, it equals to the sign of um, price change if the price change is not zero. So let's take a look at a sm small toy example. The original tick um, price is 100. After that, the tick price went to 101. We can see the, the increase in price, of, uh, in price of our tick, and in this case, the tick rule value will be equal to one. After that, we still have the tick with price 101. As the price did not change, we'll use the previous value of our tick, and in this case, the tick rule value will, will be equal to also one. And let's say, for example, after that, our tick price went back to 100. So in this case, uh, the price has declined and the tick rule value uh, will be equal to minus one. So now let's go a little bit further. And uh, the, Marco Lopez de Prado in his book defines the tick imbalance in time t as the cumulative sum of tick imbalances. So the first thing which we need to do in imbalance bars is to track the cumulative imbalances. So in tick bars, uh, we need to track the cumulative tick rule imbalance. So basically, we just sum up all tick rule values. So all, all one minus one values, we create a cumulative sum of them. For volume imbalance, we need to track the signed volumes um, up, up till time t. So we multiply the volume of the tick by the tick rule value to track the volume imbalance. The same goes for dollar imbalance, with the only difference that we uh, track signed dollar volumes. As we have previously discussed, dollar volume is, is just the price multiplied by volume. And after that, let's take a look at this quite difficult expression. So we, we would like to sample our imbalance bar when the absolute value of cumulative imbalances is more than E of t multiplied by uh, this expression. What De Prado says is that in practice, we can estimate E of t as an exponentially weighted moving average of number of tick values from pri uh, prior bars. And this probability expression is the exponentially weighted moving average of imbalances from prior bars. So now let's take a look at the code of uh, ML Finlab package to understand how imbalance bars are for, formed on practice. As we can see here, we can start from a function which applies tick rule. So as you can see, we find the tick difference uh, of current price versus uh, previous price. And if the tick, tick difference is not uh, zero, then the tick rule um, equals to the sign of this difference. But if it equals to zero, the tick rule value equals to the previous value. So this is the tick rule and it is a quite good method to um, understand whether the, tick went, whether the tick is up tick or down tick. Now let's go uh, next and see get imbalance function. So as we have discussed, we, for tick imbalance, we just need to track signed ticks. For dollar imbalance, we need to, to track signed tick multiplied by volume and price. And for uh, volume imbalance, we need to track signed tick multiplied by volume. So now let's take a look how bars are formed in um, imbalance setting. So for each row in our trades, we need to generate various statistics like price, volume, dollar volume, and to calculate tick rule. What we can see here that we need to track four important, um, that we need to track three important uh, statistics. So the first one is cumulative theta, the second one is the expected imbalance, and the first one is the expected number of ticks. 
So these are three parts which are used in condition of forming the imbalance bars. We have discussed the cumulative theta is just the cumulative sum, sum of uh, previous imbalances, whether it is tick, volume, or dollar. Expected imbalance is the exponentially weighted moving average of previous imbalances from pr prior bars. And the expected number of ticks the, is the um, exponentially weighted moving average of number of ticks of previous bars. However, here, in terms of expected number of ticks, we face the problem of chicken and egg, because on the one hand, we need to generate the expected number of ticks using previously formed bars, but at the beginning of our bar compression procedure, we do not have that bars. So we don't have any information about expected number of ticks. And here the user needs to make an initial guess which uh, will start bar generation. So here we have this special parameter which is called expected number of ticks in it. So this is the initial estimate for expected number of ticks. And we use this initial estimate to form the first bar. And after that, we will use exponential weighted moving average to uh, continue creating the bars. So this will help us to start bar compression and to understand what are the number of ticks inside of each bar. So this is the parameter of uh, bar generation. We can also see that uh, this function had the expected imbalance window as we use exponential weighted moving average to calculate imbalances and expected number of ticks. We need to specify the window for uh, UMA function and it corresponds to expected imbalance window. We can also see a parameter which is called analyze thresholds. What we have seen in our presentation, we saw the plot which um, plots the cumulative theta and the, and the threshold which is used to sample the bar. And if we would like to understand how the bar is formed and when the bar is formed, we can use analyze thresholds and it will return all these values which can be um, put on one plot and you can uh, tune your parameters uh, in imbalance bar generation. So now let's see how the imbalance bar is formed. So we calculate the imbalance by using price, sign tick and volume. And we store that imbalance into imbalance array because we will after that use our imbalance arrays in order to generate the expected imbalance out of previously imbalances. We also increase uh, the cumulative theta. And now let's take a look at this expression. So this ex if this expression is true, then bar will be generated. So the, if the absolute value of cumulative theta is more than expected number of ticks, multiplied by the absolute value of expected imbalance, then we need to create the bar. So this corresponds to the expression which was, um, uh, which was stated in the book. Uh, 